till Death Valley do us part. Do you think people get married in Death Valley? Mm. <laughs> Is that a big wedding destination? Probably not. Welcome back to the video. Today we are heading to a new spot we've never been to. It is one of the hottest places on the planet and it's the lowest elevation in North America. 2022 is the year of new. We're trying to go to places we've never been before. We're gonna hit states we've never hit before. When we're making decisions, it's going to be which direction has more new for us to see. We're still continuing this great streak of traveling every week and just like Chris said, that's that's what this year is all about. That was a pretty tight turn. She had it cranked all the way. I was worried about us jackknifing. I just don't know how tight you can turn a trailer. We didn't have our weight distribution hitch tightened because we were at an angle. If that little uh, rock tree pit wasn't there and this one wasn't here, we could have came in just a little bit wider and it would have been perfect, but she did a good job. So our, this is our second trip to Costco in the travel trailer and we've kind of been avoiding it for the most part because of the parking situation. The parking lots at Costco are notoriously busy and usually small. But this was two minutes off route so it just made sense for us to pop in and grab a few things we need. I gotta be quick in there. Quick, <laughs> quick, quick. You know what? Our ETA is already pushing 330. I think the Death Valley Costco is due to be built in 2023. <laughs> So we're not quite there yet. We're light years away from that happening. So we're about 88 miles out from the town of Betty in Nevada. And that's going to be our entrance into Death Valley. Hopefully that's the right one. I was trying to research different ways. There's a, a few different routes you can get in, uh, but that's kind of the closest to Stovepipe Wells campground, which is where we're going, and we're not going to get there until about four, so it'll be perfect timing to get set up. Uh, but we just passed through this kind of unusual Joshua Tree field, which I thought was so weird. Like, besides Joshua Tree National Park, I feel like this is the most Joshua Trees I've ever seen. For sure. Absolutely. Maybe even more, right? Like, they look like cactuses all out there. Yeah, it's like a, it's a little garden out here. Beautiful, a nice little drive outside of Las Vegas. I can't believe how much we ended up loving Nevada. It's just a great state. And it to is. think we had, like, skirted around it so many times without even thinking twice about it. Yeah, we just didn't quite get north enough. We always thought it was a little cold in the wintertime. on the sleepy little town of Betty, Nevada. There's a justice court and a sheriff in town though. Ooh, look at that old truck. Kind of oh, and I hope the first come first serve campground has some availability otherwise we're screwed yeah but i did read that it usually does not fill up capacity they have a lot of spots like 200 plus spots so and this is the off season right i don't know if this is the off season or not i think the summer would be the off season because it's 135 degrees say, i would say you'd think this would be like the prime time since we're going in there and the high is didn't you say the high is 80. 80 degrees yeah so why would the why would they have it staffed and reservation scheduled during their deathly hot season? I don't know. I gotta get this road though. Look at this.
All right, last last spot stop before we head in to the Valley of Death. Welcome to California. <laughs> That's the California border. Easiest crossing to get into California ever. Yeah, that's an unusual, unusual border crossing. So the descent down into the valley is quite breathtaking. What are your first thoughts? It's different than anything we've ever seen before. It definitely feels deathly. <laughs> like a lot of darkness, a lot of dryness. I yeah. really like the, the look of those white flats out there. Yep. When the sun's hitting them just right at this time of night too, I'm like, I'm assuming that it pops out a little bit more right now. But it's really cool. It's eerie back here. Yeah, definitely a unique landscape. This is um, so hard to describe. It's it's honestly like something you've just never seen before. I don't even know <laughs> how to properly describe it, but it's it's pretty sweet. And it's kind of creepy too because we're a little bit near Area 51. I don't know exactly where Area 51 <laughs> is, but we saw a bunch of signs for Area 51. So this is Stovepipe Wells Campground. I think there's 200 plus spots and you can see that there is plenty of room. Oh, it's just a big parking lot. Yes, it's it's not it's what you would get at a uh, Death Valley campground. Do you see the pump? Dump? Pay for campsites at kiosk. We gotta pay right here. start button. $14 per night. Uh, dump station and water is on the left, babe. We have to choose our campsite first and then come back. Okay. It is very toasty here. I could only imagine what it would be like in the summertime. You would like it. I think it's around 80. I don't know what it was today, but wow. I could only imagine what it would be like if it was over 100 degrees. How's it going? Yeah, barely. Whew. Long 30 minutes to dump. It always takes so long to get the uh, the big 70 gallon tank filled up. But it we're, takes forever. We're ready to park. Sun just set behind the mountains. It's really calm. Super kind of eerie and peaceful at the same time. It's really quiet here right now. Well, we just barely beat the dark getting in here. That was kind of a close call. So we didn't film a lot setting up, but uh, it was pretty tight here. There's actually not even enough room for our RV and the truck in one spot. So we're taking up two spots. I'm not sure how this normally works when they're busy. Yeah, it'd be really tight when it's, when it's completely full. If you have a big rig, you don't have a spot to park your truck. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, and we actually had a problem with the level system that I'll explain when I'm outside because it was kind of our fault. We put the blocks up too high and it couldn't lower the tongue down enough. But um, second time the auto level is, has not cooperated with us when we're in a hurry. So we're gonna have dinner. I'm gonna make tacos. Tacos are fast and they're delicious. We're starving, we're kind of tired. We've been up early. Long day, long travel day. It's six o'clock, we left at 11. Yeah. 
beautiful area though. This yeah. is gonna be this is gonna be good, and uh, we're gonna have fun in the morning. be wondering where my omelet is. I already ate it in like 30 seconds. It was that good. You inhaled it. It's important to get a good breakfast in when you're going on these big adventure days like we're going to do today. Nobody wants to be hangry 20 minutes after leaving. No, it's 8.45 in the morning and it's already 72 degrees outside here in Death Valley. I can feel the sunshine wanting to come through this window on this side here it is definitely toasty last night's sleep honestly it was a little rough at first it was a lot warmer than we're used to yeah i can tell like my skin like wants to sweat but it's not used to it does yours feel that way um i don't know like i feel like surface surface heat all over my skin mm -hmm. it's just weird to go from i mean literally three days ago i was in my huge winter puffy jacket winter coat Oh, and we're sitting at 60% on the batteries. Yesterday we didn't charge up that much while driving because we had the refrigerator running on AC. And speaking of AC, the goal is today while we're gone, let the batteries charge up, and then we're gonna run the AC tonight for a few hours. Well, first stop, Bad Water Basin. So this is where the landscape really starts to turn as we're heading past Furnace Creek here. We just saw diesel at $7.64 per gallon, which we might be doing, I guess. What do you do when you need when you need to get it? I'm uh, not certain we'll be topping off at $7.64. Yeah, regular uh, unleaded was like five something. So $7.64, pretty crazy. We're 13 miles from Badwater Basin, and it is starting to get pretty alien out here. It's pretty cool to see the signs where they say elevation at sea level. Or below sea level. Some of them are saying like negative 190. Yeah, they're going, you know, a little bit up and down, but it's really cool because we've never seen that before, ever. I'm pretty excited to see this Badwater Basin. Aaron, are you ready to take your first steps? I am. I haven't walked very far in this thing and I'm ready to do it at the lowest place in North America. No, on Earth. Is it North America? I don't know. Below sea level. I read 10,000 years ago the whole valley was underwater and so now I kind of like can picture it that way this is like one big dry lake bed and then you see water in here and it's just so unusual to see did you read about the bad water snail no it's a rare animal that lives in the water <laughs> must really like salt yeah. I did read that it's salty water and the beginning explorers who would like survey the land would try to get their donkeys to drink this water and the donkeys wouldn't drink the water because it tasted too salty and so the surveyors called it bad water and the name has stuck ever since that's good i didn't know that i didn't oh. read that part we must have read two separate paragraphs on the board <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like a free man yeah free booted man Go. It's 
kind of squishy. So since this is the lowest point of Death Valley, that actually makes it the drainage system for the whole park. And I read it was like 9,000 square miles the size of New Hampshire. Are you impressed? Yes. So I did, I did read that like the salt comes up through the seams of the earth. And then when it rains, which is occasionally, you know, it like brings all that salt back into a solvent and back into the earth. And the process just repeats itself. I think that's all my little boot can handle right now. You getting tuckered out? A little bit. It's just starting to, I don't want to like, this is our first half hour on the road. I don't want to. <laughs> we have a long day ahead. We, we do have a long day. I don't want to get it all sore and, okay, I'm whining now. I know. So what do you think, Aaron? What are your thoughts? Let's reflect. It's pretty amazing. We were just talking about the, the white kind of road looking part here. I think this is all trampled down where normally it would just look more like this out here. Yeah. But since there's, you know, millions of visitors, it just gets trampled down. So that was Bad Water Basin, lowest elevation in North America, 282 feet below sea level. And I think if we keep driving south, there's not a whole ton more down there. So now we're going to kind of slowly make our way back towards camp. They call this the Devil's Golf Course. We're not 100% sure why, but it, it feels like we're driving out into the salt flats. And so like they paved this road out here or graded this road out here so you could get a little bit closer view into it. But it's kind of like the salt flats, but much, much more jagged. Very jagged. The sign says be careful walking because if you fall, it could result in cuts and tears and broken bones. Erin, no walking on your feet. Lunch, lunch time. I already ate half my chicken. Doesn't everybody sit and eat chicken out of a bag? And that raven was attracted to it. That raven came over here and was like, starting to act like he was gonna murder me for my chicken. I gave each of us a giant bag of veg, some hummus, Well, that was unusual. We were just talking about how this park feels different than other parks because it's very low key. Of course, it's like the slow season right now. And I literally said there are absolutely no children at this park. I don't think it's like a park that kids get entertained at. <laughs> and then hands down, three minutes later, we get this caravan of cars. And then all these kids started piling out of the cars. And it's a field trip of eighth graders. Yeah, pretty cool field trip. I don't remember going on a field trip that cool to Death Valley. No. Starting to heat up in here a little bit. Next stop is the Artist's Drive. Which one of us is the artist? Can you guess? It's Chris. Hey. <laughs> Aren't you? I'm very artistic. I actually won a lot of contests in high school. Remember my hummingbird drawing? I do remember the hummingbird, yes. Nine mile, one way loop. I'm pretty excited. This is supposed to be the most beautiful drive.
The thermometer is saying 91 degrees. It feels like 91 degrees. It definitely transported us into summertime here. This is uh, a hot, hot summer day. It's exhausting out here doing nothing in the heat. What's funny though is this is like this is like a spring day for uh, Death Valley. A winter day. Maybe a winter day. I'd say spring because it typically gets like he said the average was like 105. Our camp host guy did. But what about what's their lowest in the winter? This. I have no idea. 70 maybe? 70 might be a low? Mm. Is a high? Mm. Low high? Yeah, we might check out Furnace Creek and see if there's anything cool to see before we head back to camp. Sounds good. Furnace Creek, here we come. At least, if nothing, I'll pop in the VC and get me my PCs. Yes. You know what that means? Of course. <laughs> Home sweet home. That was really fun. We had a really good time there. Well, we weren't planning on having to deal with air conditioning until the summertime, but here we are in Death Valley when it's 91 degrees. So I didn't install the soft start on the air conditioner yet. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I do know that the Victron Multi Plus 3000 can handle um, the Dometic 13.5 air conditioner because we did use that a few times in the van before we had our soft start there. But in this rig, we have the Mach Coleman 15,000 BTU air conditioner, which is, you know, what is that, 10 or 15% bigger, so that's a little bit more, but we don't have the soft start installed yet. But I'm excited to turn on the air conditioner and see what happens. I'll tell you one thing, a little AC cool down blast goes a long way, especially if you follow it up with a little shower cool down blast. Mm, yes. Aaron showered this morning and I said, I think I'm going to wait and shower after our day out in Death Valley. So if we look, we have nothing much running besides the inverter and a couple lights, five amps, 75 watts, we're at 84%. Let's kick on the AC. Well, that kicked on right away. That didn't even that didn't even do like the fan, and then it just like immediately kicked on. Uh, <laughs> can you feel it, Luke? I am your father. Yeah, I can feel it. But the multi plus it's starting to get cold. Took it like a champ. It's starting to get cold. I've got to say, when we started RVing three years ago. The biggest way that it impacted us personally is it really humbles you as a person. You really appreciate the basics in life, like your toilet, your power, your shelter, where are you gonna live, how are you gonna live, like food and groceries, like all of those things that people in a home take for granted. When you go to an RV, it wakes you up and it makes you realize what really matters in life are those basics. And to have AC, that's a luxury. That is not a basic, it's a luxury. And we're living extremely luxurious. And we're so grateful for it. All right, it's been exactly one hour. We started at 514 at 81%. And it's now 614 at 65%. So it actually took about 16% of our battery capacity to run for an entire hour. And we went from over 80 degrees when we got in here to about 70 degrees on the dial. So pretty amazing to be able to run the air conditioner for an hour, completely cool us down in Death Valley. So again, we're completely amazed by how much this system is allowing us to do and be free from the generator, free from propane, kind of, 
but more importantly to be able to run these big appliances and just make our life that much more comfortable. So Chris is going to make a little bit of dinner. We're going to rest up from our big excursion today here at Death Valley and we're going to check back in tomorrow because we're going to do, I think, a little bit of off-roading. Mm -hmm. 